Welcome to this video lesson. In this video, we will be looking at some examples that involve a third law of motion. All right, let's solve a few problems that involve third law of motion. And we're going to focus on the mathematical part here, but we will do some uh, drawing as well in terms of the representations, physics representation and pictorial representation. We have two skaters. Uh, who are standing on ice facing each other, so these two individuals. We got skater one who pushes on skater two with a force of 75 newton to the east. So let's take that direction to be in the east direction. And assume that no friction acts on either skaters. The mass of skater one is 55 and the mass of skater two is 78. So we have a diagram already, so I can label some stuff in there. So mass here is equal to 55 and mass here is equal to 78. And then there is a push. So during the push, what's going to happen is well, there's a few things we can do here. I am going to start off with the, I think the diagram here is enough to kind of give us an idea. Uh, we can do a more of a pictorial representation, but this is, I, I kind of like this. In this case, when this person is going to push on this person, person or skater two, at this person standing here, so it starts at velocity one and at few minutes or a few seconds later they're going to be going in this direction so from the start of the push to the end of the push this person is going to gain speed in this direction and once she gets once she lets go there's going to be, going to be no for, more forces acting on skater 2 so skater 2 will just be going at a constant velocity but when she puts a force on him uh, based on third law of motion, the same force is going to be acting on her, but in the opposite direction. So let's start with the force diagram here. And we're going to do uh, the pictorial, uh, sorry, we're going to do the physics representation for this. So we get skater one. And we got skater two. A little bit easier to start off with skater two. So we are going to have a force acting on skater two in this direction. And I'm simply going to label this. This is going to be a normal force from her hand pushing it. So I'm going to label it just one to two. This is a force acting from one to two. There is going to be forces acting up and down. There's going to be force of normal from the ground. And there's going to be a force of basically gravitational force acting on this person and he's heavier than her so for her the fg is going to be slightly smaller and fn is going to be smaller as well because of the because they need to balance out in that direction but in terms of if there is a force acting there's a normal force from her acting on him that means that there is going to be an exact same magnitude of force from him acting on her. So same magnitude as the other one. The direction is going to be opposite. And this is going to be the force acting from 2 to 1. And note that based on third law of motion, whenever there is a force, there's always a paired force. And in this case, when she puts a force this way, there's a force acting on her backwards. Okay, now that we have um, the diagram, we can see that the forces in the vertical directions are balanced, and the forces in, uh, in the horizontal direction for skater 1 is in the left direction, meaning that she's going to accelerate in this direction. And for skater 2, the forces are unbalanced in the right direction, meaning that a skater 2 will accelerate in that direction. So if we were to draw out the position, uh, the position, velocity, and acceleration time graph for these two individuals, and let's take east to be positive. It really depends on, really doesn't matter. I'm going to take east. Actually, we'll do it right here. 
take these to be positive and I'm going to use meters, second, and kilograms as my main units. They both start at a velocity of zero, so right here. Uh, purse, skater 2 is going to move in the east direction, so positive, but this one is going to move in the west direction. Uh, if the reference point is somewhere in the center, that means that she's going to go x basically speed up and this one is speeding up in the east this one's speeding up in the west and finally in terms of acceleration this one is negative and this one is positive and this would mean that the acceleration is in the west direction and this would mean that the acceleration is in the east direction now that we have the representation, the physics representation, uh, in terms of assumption, there's a few assumptions. One is that this is frictionless, the surface is frictionless. Uh, there's no air resistance, so no other forces are acting on them, except the force coming from person 1 to 2 and from 2 to 1. And uh, also that the acceleration during this time is constant, because usually that's not the case. In terms of mathematical representation, well, uh, let's try answering the question. So usually when we get to the math, we'll start answering the question. State the action and reaction force. So the action force is from skater 1 to skater 2. So this is F1 to 2 as shown in the diagram. And reaction is F2 to 1. I draw the force diagram for each so that's shown here. Describe what will happen to each skater. So uh, we kind of explain that through here and in our word representation we can do that as well. So skater 1 will be accelerating in the west direction starting from rest and moving to um, pretty much west of the reference point and skater 2 will be accelerating in the east direction they will be speeding up towards east and they will be moving to the right of the reference point finally calculate the acceleration of each skater so let's do that that requires our mathematical representation we'll start with skater one and skater one is we, we're going to look at the force diagram we're going to only care about the x direction we know that there there is no acceleration in the vertical direction and if there's no information required from the vertical direction we don't need to solve anything uh, in that direction we are going to use our second law of motion here so f net x is equal to in this case, there's only one force acting on it, so it's going to be the force 2 to 1. This usually is the sum of forces, and that also equals to mass times acceleration. What I'm going to do in this case is, uh, usually, you can see that here I'm taking east to be positive, but the easiest way to do these questions is to align your... Uh, positive direction with the direction of acceleration. So I could draw the acceleration in that direction and take east to be positive, but it gets really messy uh, and a little bit confusing if you don't. So I, uh, I highly suggest that you take the direction in which you're taking acceleration to be positive to be your positive. And in these types of questions, you can do a different positive direction for skater 1 analysis versus skater 2 versus another object. So you can change your positive either way. What I personally do is I always write it beside my second law of motion. So I can always look back and you should always represent it as well. Okay, so in this case, F21 you can see that F12's value was 75 in that direction. So this was 75. And this is also 75 in terms of magnitude. It's just that the directions are opposite. So F21, I'm taking left to be positive. This is also going to the left. So this is going to be 75 is equal to the mass 55 and my acceleration so see now it's aligned with this so i have to just use a positive it's fantastic um and you can either leave it as a 
you can leave it as either a vector or non-vector here because now we're just finding the magnitude. And if you do 75 divided by 55, we need our final answer to be two significant figures. So it's going to be 1.4 meters per second squared in the east, uh, opposite of east-west direction. So I will have to, I'm going to be using arrows. I'm just going to write west here. And for skater 2, this time my acceleration for this one is to the right. So I'm going to take right to be positive. And f net x is going to equal to the only one force that's acting is 1, 2. And that's going to equal to mass times acceleration. This one was 1x. This one is 2x. And F12, in terms of value, is 75. The mass is 78. And I'm trying to find the acceleration. And the acceleration of the second person in the x direction is 75 divided by 78, which to two significant figures will give me 0 0.96 meters per second squared. And in this one, I've taken east to be positive. So my final answer is east. And I'm going to highlight both of my answers here. And I have now answered all of the questions. So the acceleration of each is calculated. And in terms of iner idea of inertia, this makes sense because the forces acting between them are the same, but the one that has a higher mass will have a higher inertia and therefore a bigger resistance to change in motion, and therefore they should have a smaller acceleration, and they do. All right, let's try the next question. In this question, we have three boxes, A, B, and C, that are positioned next to one another on a horizontal frictionless surface. So we're assuming that the surface is frictionless. An applied force acting on box A causes all the boxes to accelerate at 1.5 meters per second to the right. And there's two things we want to determine here. First of all, the acceleration of box C. Okay, and the force exerted by box C on box B. Very cool. All right, so first of all, in terms of the ideas here, we know that an applied force is causing all boxes to accelerate at 1.5 meters per second squared. So these boxes are all going to move together, and if the acceleration of all boxes is 1.5 meters per second squared to the right. That means box C will definitely be accelerating at 1.5 meters per second squared to the right. So that one is kind of like a, I shouldn't say this is a determined, this is definitely a state type question. All right, now we're asked to calculate the force exerted by box C on box B. So we're trying to figure out what is the contact force between B and C. And we know that the force exerted from box B to C is equal to the force exerted by C to B. So let's, we kind of are interested in box C and we already have acceleration on box C. So let's draw a force diagram on box C. And in this case, we're going to focus on the mathematical part and maybe not all the physics representation. Let's see. We've got box C, F normal, uh, so the normal force acting from the ground. There's the gravitational force. And basically, box B is going to be pushing box C in this direction. And this is going to be a force exerted from. B onto C. 
Now, what we want is actually the force exerted by C on B. So what we want is F C B. But we know that this is the same magnitude as force B to C, just in opposite direction. So basically, if we find this, then we will have this. Beautiful. We know that the acceleration is in this direction, and we have the value of the acceleration. It is 1.5 meters per second squared. And I could draw the physics representation of box C. Uh, in these type of questions, usually I will ask you which box to draw it for or what your system would be so that you can draw the proper uh, representations. But I usually don't ask you to draw one for box A, one for B, one for C, one for A, B, C, one for A, B, one for B, C. It's just too many things. So um, in this case, we're mostly analyzing in box C. So it starts at a, uh, basically we can assume it starts from a zero speed, it goes up, um, it accelerates, and the acceleration is in the positive direction. Also, we are taking, uh, basically the units that we are working are meters, seconds, and kilograms. And since my acceleration is in the right direction, I'm just going to take right to be my positive here. And I will highlight this information. So now I have my physics representation. That, that diagram itself gives me some idea about the uh, kind of like the pictorial representation, representation of what's happening. And I have my force diagram the most important component that I need in force in questions which involve force. And I have some idea about how the motion is as well. We know that it's speeding up, it's accelerating in the positive direction, and it's moving to the east direction compared to its reference point. Okay, um, we are going to solve the force acting on oxy, and there's no other contact force in the x direction. Uh, and we're assuming that there's no air resistance acting on it and there's no frictional force because I think we're told that it's a frictionless surface. Yes, good. Therefore, F net X acts acting only on box C, I'm gonna take right to be positive, is equal to the only force, FBC. And that's going to equal to the mass of box C multiplied by the acceleration of C in the x direction. And the force, the value, we don't know. That's what we're trying to find. So I'll just write it down. It's equal to the mass of this, which is 5 kilograms from the diagram, and the acceleration, which is 1.5. And my final, answer, my final answer for this is 7.5 Newton in the right direction. Then that's the force acting from B to C. Uh, we are asked for force acting from C on box B. And we know that since this is 7.5 Newton to the right from B to C, uh, the force from C to B will be 7.5 Newton, same magnitude based on third law of motion, but in the opposite direction. And that is our final answer to this. Note that in this particular type of questions, we could ask you of what is the force acting on A to B or B to A, and it could get a little bit more challenging. This one was a little bit simpler because the only force acting on C is from B to C, and you could easily uh, just translate that into finding force from C to B. But let's do another example, and let's see if we can look at it a little bit more challenging situation. All right, we get a situation here. We get an in an investigation. We get a student who places a 1.2 kilogram card on the table. They tie one end of a light string 
to the front of the cart, right there. Run the string over a pulley, good. And then tie another end to a 0 0.6 kilogram hanging object. The force of friction of 0 0.5 Newton acts on the cart. Okay, so there's a force acting in this direction. And we want to determine the magnitude of acceleration of the cart and the hanging object. And we want to calculate the magnitude of tension on the string. Okay, a lot is going on here. I'm going to add a little bit of information in my diagram so that it gets a little bit easier. So first of all, there's a force of friction, 0 0.5 Newton, which I'm going to add here just in my system diagram so I have a better idea. And that's kind of all I know. I have the masses there. That's fantastic. Um, there is no stages in this type of question, so we're not saying it starts from here and somewhere else. So we don't really need to turn this into a kinematic question. So I'm not actually going to draw the physics representation in terms of kinematics. Uh, but in terms of uh, the idea is that once you put this, it's going to be a force of gravity acting on this. And um, pr and if that force is bigger than the force of friction, it's going to start pulling on uh, pulling down. And if this is, this is going down, this is attached directly to this um, pulley. And that would mean that this would also come down with it. So that two objects will accelerate together and at the same rate. We are going to make an assumption. Actually, there's a few assumptions that I'm going to uh, do before doing our before doing our force diagram. So we're going to assume that the pulley here is frictionless. And uh, we are doing that because if there was friction over here, as this is going uh, down, it's actually going to be slowed down a little bit further. We, all go we are also going to make an assumption that there's negligible air resistance and that there's a constant force, constant acceleration, sorry. I am going to call this A, and I'm going to call this B. It's just going to make things a little bit easier when I'm trying my force diagrams. And there's two different methods of solving this question, the easy way and the hard way. And um, for doing it the easy way, you need to have a very good understanding of the question. So, and, and the whole idea of how to draw force diagrams and um, stuff. So we're going to start with a little bit more challenging way. In terms of acceleration, we notice that this one will accelerate in this direction and this one will accelerate in this direction. So I'm going to write the acceleration like that. And let's go ahead and do some system diagram or sorry, force diagrams. Let's start with B. B has a little bit less going on. So it's a little bit easier to draw the forces on it. So the only force that's acting on B, one is the gravitational force going down and one is the tension force going upwards. So and because we're assuming that the object is going to accelerate downwards, uh, therefore we need to uh, actually it's this is accelerating for sure. So the force of gravity here needs to be larger than the tension force. So I'm going to draw the force of gravity acting on it. And then we're going to have the tension force. And this tension force is coming from A and acting on B. And this gravitational force is acting purely on B. And it's coming from Earth. You can write from Earth to B, but we always assume that force of gravity is coming from Earth to B. So earth on a mass, so we don't have to include it. I'm going to write that my system here is B. I'm also going to now draw a force diagram for A. And for this one, we are going to have a tension force. The tension force on this one is acting to the right, just looking at it. And basically, the tension force is coming from B to A. And 
they're both tension force, so same type of force. And this is actually the third law of motion. So the magnitude of this has to be the same as my as this force because these these are paired forces caused by the tension here and the connection and the force acting from a to b will equal to the force acting from b to a in terms of magnitude but there's just be an opposite direction the opposite directions here so if this was being pulled in this direction then you would you could see it a little bit better one would be going uh, in this direction and the other one will be pulled back so um, so on this one it would be pulled back and then this one it would be going in this direction if the if we were to take the acceleration going only in one direction so we got our tension force again the magnitudes are the same and uh, the other force that's acting horizontally on this is the 0 0.5 was because we're assuming that this one is accelerating to the right, I'm going to draw it even smaller. And this is going to be the force of friction. Uh, this is acting from the surface onto my uh, cart here. Uh, so I can write that. I'm just going to avoid it. There's only one force of friction in a diagram, and it's understandable what it is. I don't need to label it. And there's going to be the gravitational force acting on A. Note that this one is 0 0.6 kilograms and this one is 1.2 kilograms. So the force of gravity acting on A is going to be larger. So I'm going to draw this in at a higher magnitude. And this is going to be force of gravity acting on A. And finally, a normal force. So this force is actually balanced uh, because my object here is not accelerating up or down. So I'm going to draw a balance force. We call that the force normal. And I won't be labeling this from surface to A or surface to A for these two. All right, now I have all of the things that I need. I do also like to write my accelerations, direction of acceleration. So I'm going to write that here. And I'm going to write this one here. All right, so now I need to find the acceleration and then the tension. So in order to do that, I need to go to my mathematical representation and I need to write a net force uh, in for both of my diagrams. And the net force in the y direction for this is just zero. I don't actually need to worry about it because it's not accelerating in this direction. And the force of friction value is actually given to me as well. I'll write that force of friction here. It will make my, sometimes it makes things a little bit easier. So this is 0 0.5. Okay. F net x. Uh, sorry, F net y for this one. Uh, I'm going to align my positive direction with the direction of acceleration. It makes things a lot easier. And the forces acting on this one are FGB and FTAB. And this is going to equal to mass of B multiplied by the acceleration. Now, for the acceleration, you can say acceleration B. Uh, but in this case, we know that the acceleration of both of these will be the exact same value. So I'm just going to use A with no subscript. Uh, if you know that the acceleration of all your objects are going to be the exact same, you can do that. You can just write it as acceleration. Sometimes if you do have acceleration in the x and y direction, in, in situations where you have friction, you may have to change that. But in this case, I'm just going to use acceleration. Force of gravity acting on B is going to have a magnitude of mass times gravitational acceleration. And in terms of direction, it's acting downwards. Down is my positive, so I'm just going to use mass of B multiplied by the gravitational acceleration for this. Force of tension is going in the opposite direction to my positive, so I'm going to use a subtraction, and that's going to be the magnitude of the tension force. 
and I can start. So in this case, I know it's A to B, but I'm actually just going to write tension force because in terms of magnitude, in terms of direction, they're different. But in terms of magnitude, the tension force here and the tension force here is the exact same. So I'm just going to write tension force is going to equal to the... Actually, you know what, just to... I don't want to confuse you, so I'll just write A to B is going to equal to mass of B times the acceleration. And... Acceleration. Let's put all the values that we know in, so we'll see what we have. Mass of B is 0 0.6. Gravitational acceleration, 9.81. We don't know the tension force. We know the mass. We don't know the acceleration. For system A here, I'm going to take right to be positive just because my acceleration is pointing that way. And I'm going to write F net X. Uh, the forces acting in this one is the tension force. And the force of friction. And when we add them, they should equal to the mass of A times the acceleration of A. The tension force here, I don't know, so I'm going to write it in terms of magnitude. And when I write them in terms of magnitude, I have to write positive or negative. This one is going the same direction as my positive, so I'm going to write it as positive. This one is going opposite to my uh, positive, so I'm going to write it as negative. 0 0.5 is equal to the mass of A, which is 1.2, and the acceleration, which I don't know. Note that now, um, in terms of content, I have accelerations. And both of the accelerations are also just in the same direction as my positive. So I can, I can just find their magnitude. I don't even need to put this in here anymore. And this one is also in the same direction. So I'm just going to put A here. And I have two equations. And I have two unknowns. I'm just going to multiply these two out first. 0. 0.6 times 9.81. And I will get 5.886 minus Ft is equal to 0. 0.6a. And I have two equations, two unknowns. A and Ft. A and Ft are things that I don't know. So I'm going to rearrange these. I'm going to call this equation um, equation A. This one equation. Actually, this might become confusing just because I've labeled A and B already. So I'm just going to call this equation C and equation D. And I'm going to rearrange them uh, so that I have all the unknowns on one side. So F T B A minus 1.2 A is equal to 0 0.5. That's equation C. And I will have this equation rearranged. I will write it as negative F T B A B minus 0 0.6 A is equal to negative 5.886. Good. Now I have two, so that's C, rearranged, that's D, rearranged, and all I've done is I brought this one to this side, it became a negative, or subtracted both by this, and subtracted this, uh, both sides by this to get negative 5.88. Now we have to do some math. We have two equations, we have two unknowns. I'm going to add these. Uh, when I add these two, they're going to cancel each other out. That's fantastic. I am going to get negative 1.8a is going to equal to, and I have negative 5.886 plus 0.5, and that's negative 5.386. 
and I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1.8 and I will get acceleration is equal to 2.992 repeated and therefore acceleration is going to equal to approximately I'm going for two significant figures because of my 0 0.50 here or the 0 0.6 kilograms and that's going to be approximately 3.0 meters per second and we just want the magnitude of acceleration so I'm just going to write it as a and this is to the two my apologies and I'm going to box my answer okay so I've answered a for B, and I will highlight it as well, for B, I have my acceleration, and I have two equations that I can use to find the tension force, and it says calculate the magnitude of the tension force, so I'm not actually even looking to see the direction. So to find the magnitude, I'm just going to shift everything to this side, and I will have, I'll use equation C. And that says FTBA minus 0.5 is equal to 1.2 uh, times the acceleration. The acceleration I just found here as 2.9922. So I'll write that 2.922. Sorry, 2.992. And I'm just going to rearrange. And we will multiply this by 1.2, it's 3.59 plus 0.5, and this, the force of tension, actually I'm just going to write it as force of tension now. You could have done this much earlier when, when you went to the magnitude right away. I have to add 0.5 to this and I will get approximately two significant figures, 4.1 Newton, and that's the tension force between my objects there. So let's do a small recap of what we've done in this question. With most of these questions, we need a force diagram. So in this case, we had two force diagrams, one for system A and one for system B. For system A, we had a tension force in this direction, force of friction in this direction, normal force and gravitational. For this one, we had a gravitational force and a tension force acting upwards. This object was accelerating to the right, so this force was bigger and acceleration in this direction. For this one, this force was bigger and accelerating downwards. Uh, then we wrote the net force equation or the second law of motion equation for both. For system B, the gravitational force plus this would equal to mass times acceleration. So sum of forces is equal to mass times acceleration. Note that the mass has to be the mass of the system. And uh, in terms of magnitudes, direction is down, so these two match, positive, these two don't match, negative, and that's going to equal to mass times acceleration. Uh, force of gravity was mass times gravitational acceleration, put the values in, the value of mass, and we would just multiply everything out, and we have an equation with two unknowns, we can't do anything with it, we need to go to system B. For system B, we have the net force equation again. Sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration. Right is positive. These two match, so we use a positive. These two don't match. We use a negative, and that's equal to mass times acceleration. We're going to use a positive acceleration here because our acceleration also matches. Fantastic. Uh, then we are going to look, we have two equations, two unknowns, and when we do that, we can use math and use either elimination or substitution, completely up to you which one you choose. 
um, and we cancel these out uh, by adding them and we get our acceleration to be 3 or approximately 3 and once we have the acceleration we can either plug it in back into this one to find the tension force or we can plug it back into this one and solve for the tension force a little bit of math substitution or elimination and we get our final answer to me this was the more challenging way of this doing this question let's talk about the easier way i'm just going to draw i'm just going to actually take a photo of this and bring it back down and let's let's do it somewhere where mr shateri's name isn't there so it's not distracting us and let's do our second method in this method we are going to take our system to be this whole thing by doing this we no longer need to worry about the tension force in between yet and by because we don't have to care about that finding the acceleration becomes a lot easier note that when we're drawing a force diagram for an object that's accelerating we only care about the linearity of the acceleration so in this case the whole object is accelerating in this direction so uh, we only care about forces that are acting in this direction let's see what we mean by that so my system here is going to be a and b e. and uh, what are the forces acting on my system in the direction of acceleration okay so on uh, my system we can see that this part uh, there's a force acting on it in this direction that's 0 0.5 so i'm going to draw that here that's force of friction there's a force acting on this in the upward direction that's not acting in this direction i don't have to draw it out i could include it but i'm not going to um, there's a force acting downwards in this one but that doesn't contribute to the acceleration uh, nor the friction. Uh, later on, we'll talk about friction, and when we do friction, we might need to include these forces, but we'll talk about that in a separate uh, video when we get to friction. But this force is not contributing to it. Um, and we're assuming, we're going to assume that all of the acceleration is actually going in one direction. So we're going to kind of take this and go straight and uh, kind of consider that instead of this going downwards instead of drawing the force going downwards we're going to draw it towards the direction of acceleration which in this case i'm taking to be to the right you could also take it going down so in assuming that all of the acceleration is going to to the right this object the only force acting on it is in this direction uh, and these two forces i don't need to worry about this one uh, nothing happening in between because those are all internal forces when we get to this one this object is going downwards sorry there's a gravitational force acting downwards on it and that's in the same direction of my acceleration and since I've taken right to be my acceleration I'm going to draw this and this is the gravitational force acting on B it's important to label whether it's B or A because there's gravitational acceleration acting in different objects. So the force that's causing my system to be accelerating, uh, it's a combination of these two forces. There is a tension force here acting on this, but that's an internal force. I don't have to worry about it. And that's it. These are the two forces acting. So I'm going to write my net F net. Uh, this time, I'm not going to use x or y. In this case, it's just in the direction of acceleration. Uh, and I'll just take this side to be positive just to match it with my acceleration. 
this is going to equal to my uh, the sum of two forces that's FGB plus force of friction and I need to put the arrow here and now this is going to be mass times acceleration but what mass are we going to consider we always consider the mass of our system and in this case our system's mass is ma plus m b times its acceleration so i'm going to put a side note always use mass of system okay fgb it's moving in this direction that's sorry in this direction so that's same as our positive so i'm going to use a positive value and fg is going to be mass of b sorry fgb so this is the gravitational force acting on b it's going to be mass of b multiplied by the gravitational acceleration plus the force of friction force of friction is acting in the in this direction my positive is here so i'm going to use negative for the magnitude 0 0.5 this is going to equal to the mass of a which is 1.2 plus mass of b which is 0 0.6 times the acceleration and sorry this is acceleration acceleration is in the same direction as my positive so i'm going to just use the magnitude value here fantastic mass of b is 0 0.6 9.81 minus 0 0.5 that's going to equal to 1.8 times a I'm going to do this on my calculator. I'm going to get 0 0.6 times 9.81. Subtract that by 0 0.5, and I'm going to get 5.386 is going to equal to 1.8a. Divide both sides by 1.8, and I find that the magnitude of my acceleration is 2.9922 and approximately 3.0 meters per second squared. Similar, um, ex well, it has to be the exact same answer as I got last time, but a completely different method. Uh, and again, if you find the other method to be easier, that's okay. But this method sometimes is just uh, much less time consuming, depending on how many objects you have. I'm going to zoom out. Uh, we still need to find the tension force, the tension force. But since we have the acceleration, uh, we can now just use any of the objects uh, in order to find that. We can either use A or B. We can see that there are two forces acting on A: tension and friction. For this one, there is uh, also tension and gravitational. So it doesn't really matter. Let's use A. So system A, uh, I'm going to draw a force diagram on it. It's going to have a force of tension acting from B to A, and there's going to be a force of friction, which is 0 0.5. And there's going to be a force acting upwards and downwards, which don't contribute to the acceleration, but I'll, I will draw them out for this situation. And once I have this, then I will go ahead and write F net X is equal to the sum of forces. That's FTBA plus force of friction. And that's going to equal to the mass of the system, which is MA times its acceleration. Okay, now we want the tension force. Uh, it's going this, uh, okay, we gotta take a, we know it's accelerating this way, so I'm gonna take right to be positive, and right and right, so I'm gonna use a positive, right and left, I'm gonna use a negative, 
hit 0 0.5. Um, mass of A is 1.2. The acceleration is uh, positive and positive, so I'm going to use a positive value, and this is 2.992. Rearrange and solve, and I will do this on my calculator here plus 0.5, and I will get approximately 4.1 Newton for my magnitude of the force, which is exactly what I got last time, and it's the correct answer. I'm also going to show you that it doesn't matter whether you take A or B to be your system, you should get the same answer. So I'm going to use my system as B. And I'll use a different color. Let's use purple. System B. The forces acting on B is force, gravitational force acting on B, and the tension force from A to B. So F net Y, I'm going to take down to be positive because it's accelerating that way, is going to equal to force of gravity acting on B plus force of uh, tension acting A to B. That's going to equal to mass of B times acceleration. Uh, force of gravity acting on B, that's mass of B times gravitational acceleration positive because it's going the same direction. Tension force is going to be negative because it's going in the opposite direction. That's going to equal to mass of B. Uh, I'll just write mass B times acceleration on this line. Mass of B is 0 0.6. Gravitational acceleration 9.81 minus the tension force is equal to 0 0.6 times the acceleration, which we got as 2.992 repeated. And we solve for our value here using everything that we have. And if I were to rearrange this, it would become 0 0.6 times 9.81 minus 0 0.6 times the uh, acceleration that we have, and we should get 4.1 Newton using this method as well, which we do when we use our calculators. So again, it doesn't really matter which method you use. There's so many different ways of solving these questions, but as long as you do it properly, you should get the correct answer. And why does third law of motion apply to this question? Well, the tension force acting from uh, B to A is the same magnitude as A to B, just in opposite direction. I hope that this video was helpful. Have a wonderful day.